So it's time for another song review and today it's the turn of Podrick in Game of Thrones. I love this scene, it's so atmospheric so I can't wait to get going with it. Uh, we're going to jump straight in. Here's the first bit. High in the halls of the kings who are gone Jenny would dance with her ghost I think his tone is so interesting through here. So uh, you may have noticed that he's got a little bit of a buzz to the sound of his voice the whole way through this song. And um, I think you know there's various things that it could be. It could be there's a little bit of tension somewhere. I actually think that this is a conscious effort. Um, and I think that he's been in you know conversations with vocal coaches about what to do here. In the scene, you just want something simple, just some someone who is not a trained singer to have a little bit of a sing song before the massive battle and uh, you don't want anything too over produced or you know over technical. Um, but what I think they've actually done is used a lot of technique to get that that effect. So to get that buzz what you need to do is drop your soft palate and that's when some of the sound will come through the nose and you'll get a little bit more of a buzz like that. Not obviously, you know, he doesn't sing it like a witch like I just spoke. Um, but if you take that first section, high on the hill, then that's with the soft palate dropped a little bit. Again, I'm a soprano, I won't get the same sound as Podrick because he's got a beautiful baritone voice. But if I then lift my soft palate, which is what we always train to do, particularly in classical singing, high on the hill, then you actually get a more rounded sound uh, and you can get uh, you know, some more overtones in there, you can have a bit more space, so that jump is a little bit easier as well. Um, so what he's doing, not incorrect. It's absolutely gorgeous and it works so well in this scene. The reason I'm bringing it up is if you want to get that kind of effect at any point, it's really easy for tension to creep in when you're just dropping your soft palate. So when you're trying to get that nasal effect, just check in and make sure there's no tension at the, in your tongue, which would just be under here, your jaw, your neck. As long as everything's free, then you can do what you like. There's so many points at which we need to drop the soft palate. Um, so just be aware if you're trying to get that kind of effect, then that's absolutely fine. Go for it. Uh, but just be aware all has to be nice and free and relaxed. The ones she had lost and the ones she had found and the ones who had loved her the most. Oh, there's quite a lot in there to unpack. Uh, so firstly, you'll notice that there's, uh, he's got quite a, um, a way of snapping the notes short, or the words shorter, but actually he does it in such a technical way, it's fantastic that he sings through those consonants, but he just closes onto them a little bit more. So, the ones she has lost and the ones she had found. So I'm gonna go back to that section and just have a listen for the S's and the sh, those ones. The ones she had lost and the ones she had found. Being able to hear those and they're quite, when, you're, when you really listen out for them, they're quite lengthy. And that's fantastic. He's really connecting the sound together. So he's keeping the breath flow going. Really works for the phrase. Have another listen. The ones she had lost and the ones she had found. And the ones who had loved her the most absolutely brilliant i love that section and um you know the, the way he uses those consonants there is something that i've been teaching people for so long i absolutely love consonants we always think about vowels we have to sing on the vowels they're the long ones we really want to make sure that those are produced well but the consonants not only is that where air tends to escape if you're uh, not supporting the consonants properly then so much air can escape and so breath control think consonants but the other thing is that, as I said earlier, the connection is so gorgeous through there. It just, you can really tell that he's thinking through the words. And, you know, folk song, it's a very poignant moment. The words are important. So I think the fact that he's not overdoing anything musically is brilliant because it's all about the text. The ones who'd been gone for so very long she couldn't remember the names 
They spun her around on the damp old stones Spun away all her sorrow and pain Ah, oh, who else loved the word damp? <laughs> That's a very strange thing to say. Uh, he uses that so well. <sighs> Trying to do a slur between two notes can be tricky sometimes, particularly when you're trying not to do too much with it. So he strikes a very good balance here where he's not trying to overdo it and, you know, damp for just damp old stones. And he keeps the vowels so open. What can happen sometimes when we're changing notes is that we can close down onto it and we want to make sure we avoid that as much as possible. So, um, you know, what you'd usually expect from an untrained singer is damp, damp with the jaw coming up a little bit, and obviously I'm exaggerating completely, but that's the kind of thing that you'd expect. But here, damp old stones. He just keeps it open and thinks through to the end of the line. And those of you who watched the last review video, that diphthong at the end of stones, beautiful. He kept that, that first vowel going really well. Stones. And again, he does this all so subtly. I'm really impressed by this. It's absolutely fantastic. And she never wanted to leave Never wanted to leave I love you, Podrick, but I do have to say one thing. <laughs> so uh, when he went up to leave on that top, uh, top note, Never wanted to leave uh, Heard a bit of a huskiness and a bit of a, almost a growl behind it. I could please prove me wrong. I would love to be proved wrong by this, but I think that is a bit of tension creeping in because when he comes down again, it disappears completely. Never wanted to leave. He does both the same again, so I'm just going to carry on. Just have a listen out to the word leave. Never wanted to leave. Never wanted to leave. So this can potentially be a vowel issue. So the E vowel, um, it can be a little bit tight sometimes. So we just want to make sure that we try and free that up as much as possible. I think his jaw is just a little bit tight there and that's just had an after effect to the root of the tongue. Um, so I think that's probably a bit of tightness, but um, you know, it's a very small thing. Never wanted to leave. Never wanted to leave. Oh, that final note. I know I said I wanted to hear consonants earlier, but he left one out at the right time. <laughs> Never wanted to leave. Really lovely effect because again, it goes with the text. Never wanted to leave and the sound is leaving with them. Ah, oh, beautiful. Well, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous song, absolutely loved it. And uh, if you have any uh, clips that you want me to review that you think you might be able to take something away from, uh, then do just leave me a comment down below and do like, share and subscribe for more videos.